In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess. In my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection, and let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophets might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I call my son. When Herod had died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel for those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, 
took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Scientific observation tells us that the universe is held together by four fundamental forces of nature that govern the interaction of all matter and energy. And they are gravity, the weak nuclear force, the electromagnetic force, and the strong nuclear force. Without these four forces acting in concert with each other, sometimes in opposition and sometimes in harmony, the universe as we know it either would never have formed or would have collapsed into chaos long ago. And our knowledge of the universe continues to grow. Just last month, a paper was published which reports that there may be a fifth fundamental force, one that might provide a theoretical link between the universe we can see and the vast quantity of so-called dark matter, the unobserved but conjectured part of the cosmos that must exist in order for our prevailing physical theories to account for how the universe behaves. But in addition to these four or five fundamental forces, we know that there is another force at work in the cosmos without which it would neither have come into being nor continue to exist. And that force is love. This sounds like a flight of poetic fancy until we recall that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who create all things from nothing and sustain all creation at every moment are revealed to be love. St. John the Evangelist writes in his first letter, Beloved, Let us love one another, for love is of God. And he who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is why the poet Dante insisted that it is love, not gravity, that truly moves the sun and the stars. God is love, and since God is the creator of all things, the universe was made and is sustained by love. But we have a problem. Most of us have a very difficult time loving and being loved in the truth. And by analogy, here's why. We come into the world with a capacity for language, but when we're born, we don't know any words and cannot speak. It takes years for us to learn a language, how to speak and think and write. And the acquisition of any language requires long labor to learn vocabulary, grammar, and syntax and to become fluent in the expression of ideas and feelings. And when we want to say something but lack the words for it, frustration and anger are usually the result. This is why babies scream and cry and shriek, because lacking words, 
they have no other way to communicate. And so it is also in learning the language of love. We come into the world with a capacity and need for love, but we require many years of long labor to learn how to love and to be loved. And until we truly learn the language of love with its own vocabulary, grammar, and syntax, then we lack the means to express adequately how we feel. And when we get frustrated and angry, we scream and cry and shriek like little children, unable to communicate with words. Of course, love comes to us in many ways. But on this feast of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph at Nazareth, the sacred liturgy reminds us that the privileged school in which we learn the language of love is the family. And in that school, our primary texts are the inspired scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Moreover, in the providence of God, the bedrock of the family is marriage, the loving and lifelong union of one man and one woman from which new life is born in the gift of children and in which the children come to know why they exist and how they should live to be happy, healthy, and holy by learning the language of love. Now here's the difference in the analogy. Learning to speak a language is difficult because of our ignorance, which is something we can change with hard work. But learning to love and be loved in the truth is difficult because of the hardness of our hearts, which is something that only God's grace can change. And given the effects of original sin in our lives, it is hard enough for us to learn the language of love even in a strong, healthy family. But that task is made all the more difficult in our time by the sexual revolution, which has sought to replace God's plan for families with other arrangements, perhaps more congenial to our wayward wills. And after all, rejection of established order is one of the main tasks of every revolution. Consider the French Revolution. After murdering the king and enslaving the church, the new revolutionary government renamed all the seasons, months, weeks, and days to purge every reference to religion and history from daily life. And all the months were reorganized to have only three weeks of 10 days each, with the 10th day replacing Sunday as the day of rest to distance everyone from the Bible and the biblical account of creation. The revolutionary government also ordered new clocks to be made to show 10 hours in a day, with each hour subdivided into smaller segments of 10 to mark the passage of time. And all of this was done according to what the revolutionaries considered a purely rational scheme. Rational, that is, until the terror was unleashed against them by even more radical revolutionaries. Only when bodies were stacked like cordwood did the people awaken to the real world consequences of overturning all existing forms of organizing human life and then seeking to organize that new life, first without God and then against God. Just so, the sexual revolution seeks to reorganize all human relationships according only to desire and consent, a reorganization that requires sweeping away millennia of custom and law in every culture, including the norms based on divine revelation and the eternal moral law, which are designed to protect and promote family life and to acknowledge a givenness in the created order that we did not make and cannot change. In this revolutionary reorganization of love, sex is first separated from marriage and then children, and then even the meanings of words like husband and wife are replaced with new definitions which are as disconnected from reality as a 10-hour clock. Of course, it is futile for the church to expect or ask those who do not share our faith to live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the church must do everything she can to form those who believe in the gospel 
to live according to the revealed word of God rather than according to the schemes of the sexual revolution. And so today we attend to the essential truths about love learned from the Holy Family. Each of the scripture lessons appointed for this feast reveals a different dimension of the same saving truth. Namely, self-giving and life-changing commitment is the basis for true love in God's created order. And loving in the truth requires of us hardship and heroic sacrifice. But surrendering gracefully to this created order is not in any way a limitation of our authentic freedom. On the contrary, accepting the Creator's plan for our lives is the very ground of possibility for our true liberty, including freedom from the cruelest bondage of all, slavery to our own disordered self-love. And it is mainly in our families that we find freedom from the tyranny of our own selfishness. So today, Sirach speaks of the authority of parents over their children and of the obligations of children to honor and obey their parents. The psalmist sings of the blessings of family life in which reverential fear of the Lord is the basis for every honest and healthy relationship. St. Paul writes to the Colossians about the power of love to be the bond of perfection which purifies us and makes it possible for us to live with each other in virtue and kindness if we let the word of Christ dwell in us richly and teach us how to live, how to love, and how to praise God with thanksgiving. And St. Matthew tells us of St. Joseph's radical obedience to the plan of salvation, even at the cost of extreme hardship to himself and his family, an obedience that prepared the way for the Messiah to fulfill his mission. Now, because of the many and tragic ways in which our families fracture and fail, this vision of family life may seem to be a flight of poetic fancy, like placing love among the fundamental forces of nature that shape the universe. But it only seems that way to those who do not yet know, who do not yet know that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that in the obedience of faith to Christ and his gospel, we find the true freedom of the children of God, including the freedom to love each other in the truth. When we fail to live up to the example of the Holy Family, and we all do fail, that does not mean that the true nature of love or family life has changed. It means rather that we need to continue changing to continue being converted ever more deeply until we are made a new creation by grace through faith in the one who reveals that love is indeed the most fundamental force in the universe. And he is the son of God who became the son of Mary, who lived under the authority of his mother and adoptive father in the Holy Family at Nazareth, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe. with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. 
he came down from heaven. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Today we celebrate the humanity of the Word made flesh and the love of the Holy Family at Nazareth. Let us turn in faith to our Heavenly Father, asking for the grace to love one another in Christ Jesus. That all bishops, priests, our fathers in Christ Jesus, through the gospel, that they may always be faithful to their paternal duty to teach, sanctify, and govern the church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all Christian parents, that they may exercise their authority in love for the salvation of their children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all Christian children, that through obedience to God and to their parents, they may grow in virtue and attain to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That more young men will, will hear and heed the call of the Savior to serve him in the sacred priesthood and exercise spiritual paternity in the church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they will be admitted to the family of the saints who stand before the, the throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal Son to dwell in time, obedient to the laws of life in our world. Teach us the sanctity of human love and show us the beauty of family life that we may come to share in your life forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Merry Christmas and a warm welcome to all. New Year's Day is the solemnity of the Mother of God, a holy day of obligation, and we will have three masses in English. 5 p.m. on Tuesday, and 9 and 11 a.m. on Wednesday. There is also Mass in Spanish at 1 p.m. Wednesday. Please note that the Wednesday afternoon holy hour is canceled both this week and January 15th. These changes are noted in the e-bulletin and in the calendar on our website. Finally, as we continue to celebrate the birth of the Messiah, let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. of reconciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and of Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, 
and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei We celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty. 
so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Most merciful Father, bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.